Hey everybody, how's it going today? Dude Long Couch here, and welcome to my Let's Play of Submerged. This is a new indie title from Uppercut Games, a small indie development team, uh, which is actually made up of guys who used to work on Bioshock. So, these guys know a little something about game development. I'm sure you've heard of that title. Now, um, this game is supposed to be a post-apocalyptic title without any combat at all. Apparently the whole idea with this game is that they wanted it to be a relaxing experience full of like exploration and puzzle solving and just kind of soaking in the world and seeing the sights and putting things together by yourself without actually being stressed out and having to fight and kill stuff which uh, I kind of dig the idea of. I tend to like exploration in video games a lot. That's one of the things I love most about Eco, which I kind of hope this game might draw a little inspiration from. It kind of seems like it might. That might just be me projecting. I don't know. It's hard to say. But in any case, I don't know if it's actually going to translate to a good Let's Play, but I'm really excited to try this game out, and I wanted to bring you guys along with me, so hopefully you like it too. Let's get started. Let's check out the options first. We can adjust the volume, graphics. Probably want to show the HUD. Brightness looks pretty good where it is. Controls. Invert axis, no. Aim sensitivity, I'm guessing that just refers to the camera. Let's jack that up a little bit. And we'll leave vibration on. And we can look at the credits if we want to. Check that out. So you can see that's the size of their team right there. Not very large as far as, uh, you know, game development teams go these days. But I find that sometimes a smaller team can translate into a very tight and focused experience. And if the guys making it are talented, you know, being a small team does not at all have to mean that the game won't be well made or fun to play. So let's, uh, oh, there's actually some voice acting in here. Okay, I didn't know if it was going to be one of those silent protagonist games or what. But in any case, I'm on the PS4, so I don't want to do a whole lot of graphical adjustments, obviously. Let's just get started here. This game is out for PS4 and Steam right now, and it will come out on Xbox One in a couple days, apparently. So I guess that's a magic boat that just knows where to go, because neither of them were steering or doing anything to influence the direction of that boat. Okay guys, that was a very quaint little intro. I'm already getting the feeling of solitude that I like. I'm in control of this girl carrying who I assume is my brother. I don't know that for a fact, but... We got the same color hair, so I'm gonna go I'm gonna go with it for now. Something must be wrong with him, he's sick or something. I cannot read that. I don't speak whatever that is.
I think that was supposed to be giving me some kind of exposition there, but I didn't really pick up on what it was, to be honest. Something about a flood and people coming together after a flood. So he had... Okay. Dude has a big gash on his stomach. That's not good. I need something to stop Taku's bleeding. Okay. Let's hit R1 real quick and see what this is. Our story. So instead of actually having, like, text or dialogue, they're going to give the story out in these little storyboard-type drawings, I guess, which is kind of cool. Because it leaves a little bit open to interpretation. Let's see, there's our story, the city's story, creatures and landmarks don't have much yet. So they lived on these houses on top of the water. And then... There was a one, there was a one family in one house. They had kids. The kids went away. I don't know. I think I'm missing some context there right now. All right. Good news is I can move a little quicker now that I'm not carrying him though. So just speaking solely on the graphics so far, this game actually reminds me a lot of Torin, which is a game I played on my channel a couple months back, which is a. Uh, not a bad thing. It's not, like, super advanced or anything. The frame rate doesn't seem great. But, uh, there is, you know, a, a nice amount of detail in, in some of the textures and architecture. Water's a little flat, but I think everything blends together pretty nice. So I guess, uh, we're gonna get back on our boat. We're just gonna leave Taku there. Okay, so we can accelerate, we can reverse. I need to boat over and climb that building. Square is going to bring up a map. Oh, nice. We've got our home base, supplies, supplies gathered, secrets, and boat upgrade. Found zero of 60 secrets. 60 secrets is a lot. I uh, don't know how hard they're going to be to find, but that actually makes me quite happy. I was afraid that this game was going to be kind of short. Like Torn was. Torn ended up being like an hour long. I have no idea how long this game is. And okay, this is. This is weird. So if I hit left on the stick, she swings right. If I hit right, she swings left. That's gonna take a little bit of adjustment for me. I can also swing the camera. Uh. Okay, so we want to go this way. Let me look up. That's the building she was looking at. I hate it when controls are, like, reversed. It always messes with my brain. So, bear with me while I try and get the hang of this. It probably makes sense from, like, a boating standpoint. I don't know. I ain't no sailor. What the fuck is that? What? There's, like, a whale or something out here. Is he a friendly whale? I think I'm just going to cruise past him and maybe deal with him later. So I, I know that a big part of this game is supposed to be, like, scaling structures and finding ways to progress. Okay, we can dock here, I guess. we got to climb up this building. This is the Lioness Hotel. Alright, getting right into it. This girl doesn't waste time. I don't know how she knows that there's something worthwhile up here, but... I guess we're going to trust her instincts for now. It's weird that, like, this map is right on the square button. It's not even on, like, the touchpad or anything. The touchpad doesn't do anything. And no other button is doing anything right now. If you use the D-pad, you can kind of spin her around like she's the exorcist or something. That's kind of cool. Alright, so we got we got some climbing to do. Let's, uh, let's start here. All right, we're doing this, like, Ezio style. I feel like I'm an assassin right now. This girl's got mad ups. The question is, though, how much can she do? Is it all just this simple straight scaling stuff, or can we get into some crazier stuff? I'm sure that won't happen for a while, if it does happen at all. But I'm curious, that's how my brain works.
So whenever I play like like a solitary kind of game like this, I'm always like in the back of my head, I'm worried that the game is just like lulling me into a false sense of security. So it can spring some kind of enemy on me, like to either do combat or to just have to run away. For a while there, games were really liking the whole you can't fight, you just have to run and take cover gameplay mechanic. Uh, but they already said that there's no combat in this game, so unless they're like flat out lying in their marketing, which I don't think they would do, I don't think I have to worry about any of that. Okay, what did I just pick up? One of 60. Okay, I guess that's a secret. The city's story. The city was a giant whirlwind. And that's the beginning. I'll keep these in my journal. I think I'm going to have a lot of fun interpreting those storyboards, because they don't... I mean, they're not, like, super detailed. They don't give you context or anything, so... Yeah, who the hell knows? Whoa! Do I want to come down here? I think I want to keep going up, right? It seems like so far they kind of like to notate where you can climb with these little red flowers, so I'll have to try and keep that in mind. That might be important later. Can't grab that. Okay, here we go. Ooh, perspective change. And check that place out. I wish I could go into first person view, but I can't. I'm trying to see if I can like zoom in on stuff, but that is not an option. Maybe I'll get an item for that or something, like some binoculars. Emergency ration. I guess that was my goal. And they're gonna take me straight back to Taku then. So is that the whole goal of this game is survival? Like you gotta find these rations and you gotta find them every so often or else you starve to death? There was a warrior man with a watermelon. He jumped in a boat and drove straight through a whale, and then they all had fish for dinner. I think I know that story. I remember hearing that when I was a kid. Yeah. Mm. Alright, so this kid's better, but he's still a little jacked up. I need to find more of those crates. Okay. Find more crates. What do I have on here? Our story. Cities. Wait. Okay, there's there's the original stuff. So... I don't know if I'm supposed to be able to make sense of this not, or already or not. The people are, like, disappearing until there's just the guy left, and then he goes out on his own. I guess he harpooned the whale and brought the whale back to eat. Because they were starving or something. I don't know. Ah, oh, there's that whale again. He didn't seem to mess with me the first time, though, so... It's probably okay. Of course, like, now, now he's creeping on me. Look, he's waiting for me. He's stalking me. I feel completely drunk while I'm driving this boat. Just so you guys know, that's probably never going to go away. What is this? Boost. Oh, did I just find an upgrade? This will boost my boat for longer. Okay. L1. Nice. Kind of feels like the Wind Waker. That'd be a fun game to play on my channel. I do love me a good Zelda game. And I have that HD version. 
I've never tried to let's play a Wii U game, though. I don't think I'd be able to capture the touchpad. So, I don't know if that would be worth doing or not. You guys should let me know if that's something you, that you maybe would want to see. Wii U titles, but without the gamepad uh, visual support. So, this game so far seems pretty big. There's lots of buildings to explore. And let's, let's check the map real quick. Okay, I like how it says supplies with a question mark. Like, there might be supplies here, or there might be fuck all. We really don't know. If this screen size is the actual size of the map, then there's going to be a lot of exploring to do. And I've just now noticed that at some point I got an icon for a telescope. Okay, I can use my telescope to discover distant objects. Giant cereal bowl. Does it, like, mark it on my map or anything like that? No? Alright, I'm supposed to be looking for the red crates. Apparently they airdrop that shit like they did in, uh... <laughs> what was that zombie game that came out earlier this year? Dying Light. I spent half that game running for crates and trying to collect that shit. That was a good game. I never finished it, though. I don't know if I'd be able to see these crates from down here, or... Okay, I'm trying to go left. Uh, getting a little hitchy right there. Not terrible. I mean, the draw of this game is definitely not going to be the graphics, if that's what you're looking for. It's going to be the immersion factor and how well everything comes together, I think. You don't necessarily need amazing graphics to do that. I mean, ar artistry can overcome bad graphics. And I think these guys are talented enough to pull that off. I mean, if, you, if you've ever played a Bioshock game, you know how amazing the atmosphere was. What the hell is this? I just discovered a green dolphin of some kind. Creatures. Okay. So I see something shiny up there. I should very much like to climb up there and find out what it is. I just have to quit drinking long enough to steer my boat up here. Secret 2 out of 60, I guess. So, I guess the secrets that you find are the storyboards that fill in the story. And I guess that's kind of the ultimate goal of this game, is for you to, like, kind of figure out what happened. And piece together the story yourself. Which is kind of, an, kind of a unique concept. I actually, I really like that idea. If it's executed well. Holy shit, these boat controls. <laughs> Can I, can I back up? Okay, there we go. Now, go... No, fuck! God damn it! Uh, get the fuck over there! Okay, okay. Here we go, here we go. Ready? Uh, oh, it, uh, okay, I made it out, finally. I don't know why these controls are tripping me up so much. I've had enough time to get used to him now. Now, okay, okay, I think I'm getting it. Let's, uh, have I been here before? Let me consult the map. Oh, this is, this is the home base. Alright, let's go check out one more building before we wrap up this intro video. I just want to see what kind of crazy stuff we can get into. You know what, I was psyching myself out with these controls earlier. It swings her to the opposite side of, of what I'm pushing, but the actual boat goes to the side that I'm pushing because it's swinging the prow around. So basically, as always guys, I'm just a huge idiot. The controls actually do make sense. My focal point was on the wrong part of the ship. So, yeah, there, there's that. That's the thing that happens. You gotta at least give me credit, though. I own up to my stupidity. I don't think a lot of YouTubers do that. So, you know, give me points for that, at least. Where the hell am I? Alright, over here is, uh, uncharted territory thus far. 
I just want to find a place to dock and just find something. Just get into something. Oh, here we go. Can dock here. This is just going to be another secret, isn't it? Yep. And these are totally not going to come in any kind of order, so... It's going to be uh, probably a long, drawn-out process to fill in the cracks of the story. Uh, let's see. That wasn't good enough. I want to find, like, an actual thing or an item or something. What I don't know is if that stuff would just show up on your map, like, if you got near it. Would it just kind of... Would it show you that it's there? Or do you actually have to, like, see it somehow? To have it added to the, uh, to the map. Now, it looks like I can't... Uh... I can't, like, interact with those animals at all. Right now. I don't know if that'll come into play at some point or not. Okay, here's something. Is this, uh... Okay, here we go. I think I found one. Maybe there's something I can use up there. Rungholt Memorial Library. This looks like it's actually going to be a, a long journey. Alright, well, this might be a longer intro video than I intended, but that doesn't necessarily have to be a bad thing. I kind of want to go through this and see if, if they just mix up the formula at all, or if this is going to be most of the gameplay. I seem to already be stuck here. I can't shimmy over there. I can't jump up any further. Okay, here we go. I can shimmy along the bottom here. Oh, I'm climbing on the vines. Oh. Okay. It's a little hitchy. She doesn't want to climb on every square inch of the surface area, it seems. Let me see if I can go around corners here. No, I don't know if that area is supposed to be climbable or not. I'm just, I'm curious about, like, the flexibility level, how much stuff you can actually do. I can't, like, jump up faster to, uh, accelerate my ascent, which might get annoying after a while, but who knows, maybe there's, like, an upgrade for that. Maybe I'll get a hook that I can use to jump up and pull myself up. Maybe I'll get a grappling hook that I can use to just scale this whole fucking building at some point. That'd be pretty cool. Let's look around this, uh, oh, look, here's a glowy thing. Alright, it's four out of sixty. So just doing a little basic math here, we found four in, what, 20 minutes of gameplay? Uh, so that's like... I actually suck at math in my head. But we have... We have to do that 15 more times. 15 times 20 is about five hours of gameplay. If it keeps at this pace, this will be approximately a five-hour game to get 100% of everything. I have no idea how accurate that is. It's entirely possible I'm just talking out of my ass. Now, here we have what appears to be a branching point. This girl's got some mad ups on the pole, so I'm going to go up this way. I don't know what's over in that other direction if I were to climb that ivy. But I want to get to the top and get that uh, chest. I'm going to assume there was just another thing to collect if we were to go over on that ivy. At some point I will likely come back for it because it will probably be on my map. Or maybe this was the secret area because I don't see any other way to go up from here. Wait, can I climb this? That's not a pole, it's just a weird texture on the building. 
Can't open the door or anything like that. Yeah, this was the, uh, <laughs> the secret area. I guess we're backtracking now. I like that you can go down relatively quickly. I would say so far the controls aren't like 100% perfect. Every now and then she'll drop down or pull up when you don't really intend her to. And uh, it's kind of specific about where you have to climb when it comes to this vine stuff. You can see there's a little empty patch right there. But it won't let me climb up from here. I guess I have to go up this way. That's slightly annoying. Not a huge deal though. Oh dear. Okay, so that was a fixed camera angle there, but the controls remained the same. Instead of having me push in the direction she was moving on the screen, I was still just pressing up. So I'll have to try and remember that. Every game handles that a little differently, and you gotta kinda get used to it on a game-by-game -game basis when it comes to the whole fixed camera angle thing. Drop down here. Are we getting close to the top here? Looks like maybe we are. Can I use my telescope from up here? I totally can. That's cool. Oh? Hey, I discovered something. Nice. Okay, so you can find stuff and add it to your map. You just have to scope it out. Oh. Get a little indicator too, it seems. Something down there. So this game is basically going to be one big collectathon, is what I'm getting. I don't know if this will translate to a really great full-length let's play. Um, I'm, I'm gonna keep going with it to see if you know, like, if, how much variation pops up in the gameplay. I'd like to see some actual puzzle solving, some like navigational challenges. Because right now it's kind of just a matter of finding the path and then taking the path. Not a whole lot of challenge to it. Wait a second. I see that glowy thing down there. Can I get down there? Almost missed it. <laughs> that was good design, though. The camera angle made sure that I saw it as I was climbing up. So I didn't miss it. Six out of 60. I want to say this game actually has a full day-night cycle. Let's see if I can... Uh... I guess the sun's behind some clouds over there, or it's coming up over the horizon, maybe. But it seems like it's slowly getting lighter and lighter. The effect's really cool. Nope, don't go down. See right here, I was trying to go right. And the controls kind of had other things in mind. And you know, as I'm going along, finding these ledges on these buildings, I should probably just take an opportunity to look around and see what I can scope out and add to my map. Actually not finding anything here on this side. Oh, there's something. 
Okay, so there's something up there. That's going to be a hell of a climb right there. Look at that building. Jesus. Whoa. Whoa. I didn't want to do that. What the fuck? Okay. She didn't waste any time. You walk up to that zip line, you're fucking getting on it. You don't have to hit a button or do anything. That's good to know. I will have to remember that. Can I climb up over here? Anything? No, I guess that's just there as a... <laughs> a false ledge. Damn it, go left. It could just be me. It seems like the controls are a little finicky as far as distinguishing between two directions, left and up, or right and down, yada yada, such and such. Just when they're right next to each other. And I don't like the way that the lines on those buildings glow, because it looks like a pipe you can climb, but then it's not. It's faking me out. Alright, red flowers, come up here. I see another zipline over there, so I guess we're going to go back to where we came from. Hey, there's the, uh, there's the crate that I want. Question now is how do I get up to that zip line? Whoa, whoa. Don't want to do that. Can I climb trees? No. I can't get over how much this game does remind me of Torin, though. Oh, there's a little ledge right there. Just in, like, the like the way it looks and the way it feels when you move around. They're probably built on the same engine. I think they're both probably Unreal Engine 4 titles. I'll have to look that up and confirm that, though. Don't quote me on it. The fuck? Oh, okay. She just jumps up and grabs that one, too. I'm guessing that when I pick up that loot crate, it'll automatically take me back like it did last time. So let me just look around first. There's no going back on these, right? Like if I stand here, I can't like inch my way up. No. That makes sense. Two emergency rations out of what? Ten? Is that what I counted there, real quick? What the fuck is that thing? Dude, this game is dying light. There's fucking zombies in here. That thing kind of looked like one of those things that come out at night in that game. I can't remember what they're called. Okay, but now I got a fire going. Little brother's doing, again, a little bit better, but still not great. get a little bit more story here. A red guy with watermelon takes a trip in a boat, gets caught in a storm, and drowns. Well, that's a tale as old as time. Taco to Festa. Get what? Here. I need something for Taku to drink. Okay. So, yeah, we know his name's Taku, but I don't know what my name is. So I guess that's going to be the basic rhythm of this game. We got eight more crates to find, and I guess our, our little brother Taku there gets a little better with each one we find. And we get a little bit more story exposition, which so far I have not been able to make heads or tails out of. But it seems like that's the whole loop of this game, is you just track down stuff to find, and then go and get it. I hope the gameplay gets a little deeper. I hope that more stuff opens up. I like the idea of boat upgrades. It said that there were a lot of them. So far, it's just a speed boost, so I don't know what else is going to come with that. But uh, so far, I would say I'm enjoying this. I don't know if it'll like uh, 
if it'll deliver as we keep going, but so far, just the idea of something you can play to relax and, you know, kind of unwind instead of getting all intense with, you know, like, death and killing and crazy action sequences, uh, it's a nice change of pace. Not every game has to be Gears of War, you know? So, um, I know this is like the third time I've said it, I don't know if it'll translate to a good Let's Play, but I'll keep going with it. And I hope you guys will leave me some feedback. Just let me know what you think of this intro. Let me know if you want to see more. Um, if it gets good feedback, I'll, you know, I'll try to put out more as quickly as I can. And if not, I'll probably put it on the back burner and focus on other stuff. It's not to say I won't finish it, but, you know, I'll kind of try to prioritize things based on feedback. Because that seems like the smart way to go about it. So thanks for watching, guys. This is Submerged. I'm Dude Long Couch, and I hope to see you back in the next part. Thanks for watching, guys. Later.